So the start of the monster truck frames. It's two side frames and two middle frames, whatever we'd like to call them. At the same time, it's the first time my printer is actually printing something that's worth making the bed for this large. <laughs> I designed the printer having larger parts in mind and so far I've actually only printed stuff I should have been able to print on a 200 by 200 frame or a printer I should say, printer frame but now this I couldn't have done on a smaller printer I hope the damage on my bed will not show up too much in the parts and you'll be see the first part at least having a decent shape and it'll be about 12 hours printing, so I'll make some updates here and there. An hour and 20 minutes into the print. Parts are shaping nicely. And this print should take me about 12 hours, which seems like a lot because it's not a lot of material going through. But I print two wall thicknesses which is twice 0.4 of a millimeter, so 0.8 of a millimeter wall thickness. And I also choose to print 0.8 millimeters top and bottom layers, which means it's four layers because I print at 0.2 of a millimeter layer thickness. Besides that, as you can see there is a skirt, or actually, yeah, it's a skirt, but it's an offset skirt to prime the nozzle. And with this print, it is huge, very long. And besides that, I make two lines to prime the nozzle and I printed three layers thick which is completely unnecessary and overkill but I do that because my bed adhesion is very good and I like my bed adhesion to be very good but if I don't make a substantial skirt it never comes off I have to peel it off millimeter by millimeter now that I have a substantial actually extra part printed the skirt I'm able to really peel that off easily. It usually comes off in one or two parts. So that's why I do that. And print speed is relatively decent. I print at 70 or 80 millimeters a second officially, but all the walls are of course printed slower. And it's doing a nice job so far. So um, I did use, uh, I do use uh, a mild cooling. There's a cooling fan on the, towards the nozzle. Uh, usually at PETG I don't do that. It's not necessary. But because I'm going to have to bridge huge ends, I put on 60% of fan when we get it to higher levels. And as you can see, the fan is currently at 15%. I never start the fan up to a higher percentage. I only make steps of 15%. So the first step is 15% and then a little later in the print I go to 30, then I go to 45 and then I end up at 60 in this case. Because if I were to switch up to 60% from zero, then the nozzle cools down almost seven degrees before the system is reacting. Of course the controller will be reacting faster but before the heat is back on and then we have an overshoot again if I make steps of 15 uh, percent then the nozzle hardly notices the difference and falls a couple of degrees and corrects really fast and doesn't really overshoot so that makes it very nice to do so well we'll see you in the next update about four and a half hours into the print you can see the infill still in certain parts. Most of the parts are being covered at the moment. And this is also the reason I use a lot of upper and lower layers. So the infill, which has to support the upper layer, gets a good coverage. If you only put one or two layers over, it's usually ugly. And now with three or four, four in my case, it becomes less ugly. It doesn't become very beautiful because I'm printing PATG, not PLA. But PATG should be stronger, which in 
this case printing a monster truck RC car. Strength is something I appreciate in this case. Here we are, almost nine hours into the print. Actually, this is the time the uh, slicer software should, said I should be done, but I also said 12 hours it would be because the slicer software hasn't got a clue. Uh, at least that's my experience. So, the two middle frames are done. They don't grow any higher. And I don't peel them off yet. I could if I wanted to, but the bed is hot. The bed is 70 degrees Celsius. Zoom in, please. Thank you. And because of that, the PETG is slightly uh, elastic still. It's not completely firmed up yet. So I leave the parts on there until the bed is cooled down. This does make it difficult to take them off, but especially with these thinner parts or parts with these bar structures or anything, if I loosen one end, of the part and the other parts of the other half or the other part of the part is still attached to the bed the stuff will warp and when it cools down it'll stay warped so I leave it to cool with the bed until the bed is below 30 degrees which is usually like uh, some 15 to 20 minutes after I stop printing because my bed is a huge thick alum aluminum slab with a large silicone heater underneath it's 1.4 kilowatts, it's a big one. But the whole aluminium slab is 420 by 420 by 10 mil. So it does have something to heat up. And after it's heated up, it takes a while to cool down. This makes it also very stable in temperature, by the way. Anyway, the higher parts are growing in the background and you can see they're not entirely beautiful, which has got to do with the fact that it's PDG. PDG is a bit of a sloppy, uh, printing material in my prints but that's just what happens and I don't mind size wise they're accurate enough and they, yeah they don't look as good as, P as PLA but they should be a lot stronger which in this case I don't mind building a monster truck we are currently at the point in the print it's 51.6 millimeters I believe that the bridging should start not on this layer yet but on the next one and I hope that it'll work because if it doesn't I have to think of something else and PETG is notoriously bad at bridging because it's flowing too much as a liquid so we're working on the here we go, 51.8, focus, no focus, well it's 51.8, you better believe it. And it draws a little string between and it looks like little strings. It actually looks like there's some bridging material there. It's weird. It's not beautiful yet. But it looks like the start of something. Now we have the second one to do. Can meanwhile take a look at the first one. And it's not perfect. But there is material suspended between the points, so there is material to be built on. I think it's going to work. Wishful thinking, that's called. Oh dear, yeah, there is material there, so there is something there, it's not beautiful. But there is something there to build the next layer onto, I think. And 
and we just skip to the next level, 52.00 mil. And yes, material is being deposited onto the previous layer. The inside's not exactly going to be pretty, but I don't care as long as there's material. And the next layer will build onto it, and it will be strong. Yay! So far, so good! This is above expectation. I was thinking this was the point the print would fail. But up to now, it seems like the material is staying in there. Now it's putting some more material on between the strings. This is why I put the coolant cooler on. I could have switched it on the way later, so but anyway. I hope that the suspended strings have cooled down enough so that they're hard and the next layer will actually stick to them. And it looks like that's the case. The sun's going down, there's not a very a lot of light in this room, so I hope you can actually see that there's material in between there. Hang on, I'll switch on a little light, see if I can get some more detail. Here we go. This is with the light on. And you can see that between the high points there's actually material suspended there in midair. Here we go. Yeah. It's working. Great. Yee! I'm happy. Now, of course, there's still a gazillion, a gazillion other things that can fail, but so far, so good. So here are the parts, rather badly lit, on the kitchen table at night. Everything came out great. No stringing, hardly any stringing. There's a little bit in there. But for hu such huge bridges, in PETG, I'm chuffed. So, tomorrow, next print, more parts. I'll probably be printing for another week before everything's done. But that's part of the hobby.